and have a good day. This is Adam. This is my video reply to Lonnie's video over at Myopia Inner Sight on her channel. And I'm going to continue where she left off reading on establishing the correct teaching for the peace of the land, which is uh, called Risho Ankoku Ron in Japanese, my understanding, but I don't speak Japanese. I just pray in it, or chant in it, rather. All right, um, let me see if I can do this. I hope you guys can see the screenshot. I'm going to start over from where she left off, but I'm going to overlap hers by a little bit. Um, okay, here we go. This is where she left off, right here. The Benevolent King Sutra, for example, says, Evil monks hoping to gain fame and profit in many cases appear before the ruler, the crown prince, or the other princes, and take it upon themselves to preach doctrines that lead to the violation of the Buddhist law and the destruction of the nation. The ruler, failing to perceive the truth of the situation, listens to and puts faith in such doctrines and proceeds to create regulations that are perverse in nature and that do not accord with the rules of Buddhist discipline. In this way, he brings about the destruction of Buddhism and of the nation. It seems kind of self-explanatory, doesn't it? Hold on, I need to pause and get myself some water. Okay, I'm back with water. Anyway, as a certified homo, I have to decorate my water to decorate things. Otherwise, I don't feel at home. Okay, so where did I leave off? Okay, he, in this way, he brings about the destruction of Buddhism and the nation. So, you know, clearly that's pretty much talking about, oh, wow, I didn't realize my shaving job was so uneven. Yeah, look at that. It looks terrible. Oh, uh, okay. Hold on, I got to fix that. That looks really weird. Anyway, I'm laughing because my, I trimmed it over here, so, wait, is that mirrored? Okay. And it looked really weird, but nobody said anything earlier because I went to the store with my mask on, so nobody could tell me it looked so weird. All right. <clears throat> so the whole thing about evil monks, blah, 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 you know, I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory. I mean, we, we can all tell from the current political situation that people who pretend to be Christians, you know, and I'm saying this from a Buddhist perspective, you know, so I'm not trying to be holier than thou, right? Like, my religion is better than yours or any, any of that crap, which some people mistakenly think. But what I will say is that I was raised in a Methodist household, so I know what um, real Christians look like. The ones that really do what they say they believe in Jesus and all that stuff. And it's definitely not what these hate mongers do that make crap loads of money off of us, you know, and then live like just like demonically possessed weirdos, you know, in their own term, to use their own terminology. You know, there's no excuse for people to, um, to behave the way they do, you know. And uh, the people that follow them are also going off the cliff with them because they're voting for people who are taking away their fundamental rights as human beings, you know. They're not just harming women and trans people and gays when they do all this stuff. They're harming all of society. And they're harming the poor most of all. And that's their, that's their whole goal. It's to support the billionaires, you know. That's why not one of them is talking about repealing the billionaire tax, that uh, tax cut that causes billionaires to pay almost nothing. You know, uh, us, us poor people, which is most of us now, there's not much middle class left in the United States, are paying far higher taxes than the wealthy are. And all that lost revenue is anyway, they're just hypocrites. On the right wing I'm very left wing so anyway I'm gonna stop with the politics but basically 
twelve in the twelve hundreds, Nichiren was already seeing that churches were ingratiating themselves with uh, with the ruling class of Japan, and what they were doing was they were using people's faith against them. They were telling people stories to support a uh, corrupt, uh, corrupt regime or corrupt parts of the regime mm -hmm. rather than the good parts. And so when he says he's bringing about the destruction of Buddhism and of the nation, well, Japan was a primarily Buddhist nation back then. So, you know, their teachings were teaching people to be compliant to, uh, to negativity and destruction and bigotry and, you know, um, excuse me, and uh, that's why he mentions this here. So to go on a new part, the Nirvana Sutra states, I wish this Bing thing wouldn't show up here. The Nirvana Sutra states, Bodhisattvas have no fear of mad elephants. What you should fear are evil friends. Even if you are killed by a mad elephant, you will not fall into the three evil paths. But if you are killed by an evil friend, you are certain to fall into them. So he's just clarifying that if you um, if you're killed by a mad elephant, what happens? You know, you just die. But if if you ha are led astray by a bad friend who teaches you bad things, then before you die, your lifespan will probably be shortened by that bad friend's bad advice. But also not. But also don't forget that. On your way down that path, you'll also be doing all kinds of bad things. Um, the three evil paths, I'm going to have to look that term up, because I don't remember it at the moment. Um, I don't know if it's greed, anger, and foolishness. So let's see what Bing says. Oh, okay. The realms of hell, hungry spirits, and animals. So it's the lowest of the ten realms. In other words, the lowest life state that you can be at within. Um, so, the three evil paths are the realms of suffering into which one falls as a result of evil deeds. Path here means state or realm of existence. So, in other words, you will be doing some, you know, f fucked up stuff. Excuse my French. Anyway, um, before you die, if you're killed by a bad friend instead of by an elephant, a mad elephant. So the Lotus Sutra says in that evil age there will be monks with perverse wisdom and hearts that are fawning and crooked who will suppose that they have attained what they have not attained, being proud and boastful in heart, or there will be forest dwelling monks wearing clothing of patched rags and living in retirement who will claim they are practicing the true way despising and looking down on all humankind, greedy for profit and support. They will preach the law to white-robed laymen and will be respected and revered by the world as though they were arhats, or gurus, basically, um, who possess the six transcendental powers. Because in the midst of the great assembly they constantly try to defame us, they will address the rulers, the high ministers, the brahmins, and the householders, as well as the other monks, slandering and speaking evil of us, saying, These are men of perverted views who preach non-Buddhist doctrines. In a muddied kalpa, or muddied age, in an evil age, there will be many things to fear. Evil demons will take possession of others and through them curse, revile, and heap shame on us. The evil monks of that muddied age Failing to understand the Buddha's expedient means, how he preaches the law in accordance with what is appropriate, will confront us with foul language and angry frowns. Again and again, we will be banished. So what they're saying is, is that they'll uh, not only will, in this, in this evil time, not only will these people be um, influencing the government, but they'll also be slandering good people to all of society and then get that person harassed or beaten up or whatever and that is true because why because we live in a narcissistic system 
We live in capitalism. And we don't even live in a, we don't even live in a non-corrupt, excuse my crooked glasses, we don't even live in a non-corrupt capitalism. We live in the most corrupt, crony, you know, gamed, gamed and tweaked system that you can imagine. You know, it's, it's tweaked against your vote. 80% of us basically can't even really vote, um, you know, and then the money is always distributed before it comes down to the rest of society. So, yeah, it's pretty bad, you know. This is a, we live in a very messed up time, you know. The middle class is shrinking. Uh, it's been steadily shrinking for 50 years, um, what does that mean? That means the money has been shifting upward to fewer and fewer people to the top 1% of the top 1%. So, um, yeah, these are bad times. And women are losing the right to their own bodily autonomy. They're trying to do the same thing to gays. And, and it's all these corrupt Republicans who don't realize that they're being influenced by Vladimir Putin, who hates transgender people, he hates gay people, he thinks women should be subservient to men. These people have no idea that they're kowtowing, toadying to Vladimir Putin, not just Donald Trump or any of these other fucking idiots. You know, Vladimir Putin may be very corrupt and awful, but he's way smarter than these, these idiots who are listening to him. You know, all they want is to stay rich. He just wants to control the whole world. So anyway, so they, uh, okay, so they will confront us with foul language and angry frowns. Again and again, we will be banished. So that means that the good people who are trying to fight this kind of corruption will be um, harassed. And that's true. That's exactly what's happening. You saw what happened to Nancy Pelosi's husband getting attacked by a hammer by one of these guys, you know, good thing he couldn't get a, um, good thing he lived in a gun control neighborhood, otherwise Paul Pelosi would be dead now, you know. So anyway, the Nirvana Sutra says, after I have passed away and countless hundreds of years have gone by, but the sages of the four stages two will all have all passed away. After the former day of the law has ended, and the middle day of the law has begun, there will be monks who will give the appearance of abiding by the rules of monastic discipline. Okay, the former day is uh, basically uh, Nichiren had, according to Buddhist teachings, divided up um, er eras of human history into times when uh, Shakyamuni was alive. You know, he, a lot of Buddhism considers him the Buddha, but in uh, Nichiren Buddhism, we all we are all Buddhas. So uh, basically, um, what he said was is that after people of great wisdom die, there are stages of law that occur after that. So right at first, things are on a nice and even keel because people who have wisdom are being listened to. But then, as you go on, you start getting into like uh, fake law or counterfeit law. You start getting farther and farther and farther and farther away from that teaching, and then um, all of human society starts going to hell. So he's saying that towards the, the end of that next period of the law, of the degradation of the law, there will be monks who appear to live by the rules of monastic discipline. But they will scarcely ever read or recite the sutras, and instead will crave all kinds of food and drink to nourish their bodies. Though they wear the clothes of a monk, they will go about searching for alms like so many huntsmen who, narrowing their eyes, stalk softly. They will be like a cat on the prowl for mice, and they will constantly reiterate these words, I have attained our hatship, or I've become, um, I've become a sage, or I've become a prophet. And you see this now with those fake non-Christian evangelical churches. You know, they're, what have they done? Oh, they've declared that they've, that they've, you know, on their own, they've just decided that they have reached a stage of just perfect enlightenment or whatever. And then they're going to start stalking, stalking their prey, their, um, their cult followings 
for um, f uh, f for prophets, like a cat on the prowl for mice. And they will constantly reiterate the words that I have attained enlightenment. Outwardly, they will seem to be wise and good, but within they will harbor greed and jealousy. And when they're asked to preach the teachings, they will say nothing. So, th they, you know... This is this is for people just out in public and out out and about, you know, when they ask one of these people who knows nothing about their Bible, you know, um, tell me your favorite part of the Bible and they don't know any part of the Bible. So they don't they don't say anything about it. They just kind of, you know, give you a word salad like narcissists do. So like Brahmins, like, uh, you know, Brahmins, gurus who have taken a vow of silence. They are not true monks. They merely have the appearance of monks. Consumed by their erroneous views, they slander the correct teaching. So, not only do they not only do they tell you things that aren't necessarily true for their faith, but they'll also tell you that things that are true in other faiths um, are are wrong. You know, so. You know, I, I know I'm talking a lot about Jesus, but, you know, this is this is what these people claim to be about Jesus. I, I don't claim to be about Jesus, you know. Uh, you know, if you believe in Jesus, that's great. That's fine for you. But you better, you better really act like you believe in Jesus, you know. You better not be, you know, uh, firing pepper spray in the face of a homeless guy, you know, or telling a, a transgender a uh, person who's reading stories to uh, kids at the children's section. You better not be telling them they're a, a pedophile when they're not. You know, they're probably one of the best friends your kids would ever have. And I know that because I know a lot of them. And they are some of the nicest people you will ever meet. So, consumed by their erroneous views, they slander the correct teaching. When we look at the world in the light of these passages of scripture, we see that the situation is just as they describe it. If we do not admonish the evil priests, how can we hope to do good? If we don't confront these people, how can we hope to be on the right side of history? Just tell me that. If you're not willing to talk to these kind of people these fakers, these fucking fake Christians, these fake religious people, to their face and admonish them for their lies. How can you hope to be considered a good person? Answer me that. You know, I'm getting cantankerous in my old age. The guest, growing more indignant than ever, said... Well, I also have PTSD pretty bad, so that'll do it too. The guest, growing more indignant than ever, said, A wise monarch, by acting in accord with heaven and earth, perfects this rule, his rule. A sage, by distinguishing between right and wrong, brings order to the world. The monks and priests of the world today enjoy the confidence of the entire empire. If they were, in fact, evil monks, then the wise ruler would put no trust in them. Do you see Biden hanging out with these people that call themselves prophets and then go on a stage and their Christian stage and start going, You know, no. They don't believe in speaking in tongues, you know. They don't take, uh, you know, episodes of, of epilepsy before people knew what it was in the in the 1200s and then call that enlightenment you know they don't dance around with snakes and you won't see them hanging out with people that dance around with snakes as as their church you know worship and i'm not saying that you know your church can't worship snakes i'm just saying that if you call yourself a christian but you treat gay people like crap you treat transgender people like crap. You, creep, you treat liberal people like crap. You treat us Buddhists like crap. You treat uh, Hindus and Jews and women like crap. You're not a fucking Christian. 
So if they were in fact evil monks, then the wise ruler would put no trust in them. So he won't be spending time with these people. Paula White and all these fucking clowns. If they were not true sages, then worthies and learned persons would not look up to them. But now, since worthies and sages do in fact honor and respect them, they must be nothing less than paragons of their kind. Why then do you pour out these wild accusations and dare to slander them? To whom are you referring when you speak of evil monks? I would like an explanation. So this is a dialogue where the guy is questioning Nichiren, asking, why are you talking about evil monks? What, what do you mean by that? If they're monks, aren't they just naturally wonderful people because they want to hang out with their, their political leaders and give them uh, spiritual support? You know, why are you being so mean to these people, to these nice, nice people? That's what the questioner is asking Nichiren. So he replies, the host said, in the time of the retired Emperor Gotoba, I don't know how to pronounce that. In the time of the retired Emperor Gotoba, there was a priest named Honen who wrote a work entitled The Nembutsu Chosen Above All. He contradicted the sacred teachings of the Buddha's entire lifetime and brought confusion to people in every direction. Nembutsu Chosen Above All states, Regarding the passage in which the meditation master Tao Cho'o distinguished between the sacred way teachings and the pure land teachings and urged people to abandon the former and immediately embrace the latter. First of all, there are two kinds of sacred way teachings, the Mahayana and the Hinayana. Judging from this, we may assume that the esoteric Mahayana teachings and the true Mahayana teachings are both included in the sacred way. If that is so, then the eight present-day schools, the True Word, Zen, Tendai, Flower Garland, Three Treatises, Dharma Characteristics, Treatise on the Ten Stages Sutra, and Summary of the Mahayana all are included in the sacred way that is to be abandoned. The Dharma teacher Tan Luan, in his commentary on the Treatise on Rebirth in the Pure Land states, I know that Note that Bodhisattva Nagarjuna's commentary in the Sten Stages Sutra says there are two ways by which a Bodhisattva may reach the Avai Vartika or non retrogression. One is the difficult to practice way, the other is the easy to practice way. The difficult to practice way is the same as the sacred way teachings, and the easy to practice way is the pure land teachings. Students of the Pure Land School should first of all understand this point. Though they may be people who have previously studied the Sacred Way teachings, if they wish to become followers of the Pure Land teachings, they must discard the Sacred Way and give their allegiance to the Pure Land teachings. So, basically, this person, uh, this priest named Honan, had written... Um, had written all these treatises stating which types of Buddhism were to be practiced and which were not thought to be practiced. So, um, basically, what he's doing is calling out, you know, points of that he felt were erroneous in other teachings. So, what he said, basically what he did was he told people to abandon all of those different types of Buddhism. And what Nichiren is saying is, is that's wrong. It's not the same kind of Buddhism that he practices. But he doesn't think that just because he doesn't believe in it, that, you know, any good practice... Sorry, I hit the wrong button. He doesn't believe that any good practice um, uh, should be abandoned. And, and I don't think so either, you know. Um, I have people in my family who are, uh, who are Christians. They've been Christians their whole lives. And I think that's wonderful, you know. Uh, they have a good practice. They have a good faith. And they, and they really mean it. And they don't, um, and they don't uh, seem to practice any bigotry that I've seen, you know. 
and nor would they think of codifying any bigotry into the law and thinking that that's a good thing to do. Oops, hit the button again. So anyway, um, yeah, so Nietzschean is telling, telling you here that just because, uh, you know, somebody is telling you to abandon your faith, you know, whatever it is, don't necessarily listen to them because they're probably just trying to get control over your bank account. Um, you know, and that seems to be holding up as true today quite a bit. Uh, okay, I'm going to take a break here. So anyway, I realize I kind of skipped over those paragraphs above, but um, the reason I did that is because he's mostly listing off a bunch of Buddhist teachings and there's and writings, and there's many thousands of teachings, some of them going back almost 3,000 years. So it's a lot of, um, you know, it's a lot of listing out there. And we don't, I don't think, I feel like if you can go to the website yourself and, and look it up if you want to read all about that. But anyway, I'm going to continue here. So at where Honan is telling people to abandon, uh, um, all of other Buddhism calling it a band of robbers. So basically what he's doing is this other guy, not Nichiren, but Honan that he's talking about, is telling people to is telling people to um, not only really have just abandon their faith, but kind of abandon a sense of morality overall. So, you know, that's really what's going on here is he's not just telling people to to um, to not practice their that faith, those faiths he's telling people to abandon most of buddhism so it sounds more like he's prep, prepping people to act in immoral and in bad ways so he goes as well as the students of buddhism of the ten directions and calls them a band of robbers causing the people to insult them in doing so he turns his back on the passage in the three pure land sutras the sutras of his own school, which contains Amida's vow to save the people, accepting only those who commit the five cardinal sins and those who slander the correct teaching. More fundamentally, he shows that he fails to understand the warning contained in the second volume of the Lotus Sutra, the heart and core of the entire body of teachings the Buddha expounded in the five periods of his preaching life, which reads, If a person fails to have faith, but instead slanders this sutra when his life comes to an end, he will enter the Avicii hell. Now, this was probably written by the person who first decided to write down the Lotus Sutra. A lot of these things were, were um, connected or, or very slightly, very lightly connected um, statements. And they were memorized because most of the people then in that area did not write. So most of this was memorized from stuff Shakyamuni said. And then uh, later on when they had the, I think it was the first or second council of Buddhism after second council of Buddhism, I forget what, what it was called. And uh, after he died and a lot of these people who had done all this work of memorization came together and then they gave this they, uh, this testimony of what they'd memorized and it was written down by somebody. So this person included in there and said, hey, you know, this is, this is really the fundamentals of what Shakyamuni was trying to preach when he was alive. So if somebody is putting down all the contents of this sutra, they're really kind of heading on a path to hell. So it was, you know, I take the, so personally the way I read it is that they want you to. They want to keep you from, from, uh, from having erroneous faith and having erroneous teachings and b believing and and BS because it's just gonna get you and wind you up in trouble. So now we have come to this latter age, when people are no longer sages. Each enters his own dark road, and all alike forget the direct way. How pitiful that no one cures them of their blindness. How painful to see them taking up these false beliefs in vain. As a result, everyone from the ruler of the nation on down to the common people believes that there are no true sutras outside the three pure land sutras and no Buddhas other than the Buddha Amida with his two attendants. So what he's saying is the end result of what that, 
uh, what that priest did there was he uh, caused people, he, 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 you know, it's like he drew a, a knife across a map and cut people off from their, from their faith or from their beliefs. And what it did was, instead of getting a bunch of followers of one religion, what it did was, was cause them to abandon the things that were good about their faiths. So they're ending on their up on their own dark road and they don't have spiritual guidance anymore. Why? Because instead of having a real priest, they have a charlatan. They have a, a false priest. They have a dude who's there to, to cut people off. Now I'm not saying that people who belong to the faith or whatever that was created at that time, that this descend this is seven hundred years ago, you gotta remember, eight hundred years ago pretty soon. And um you know, that's, that, a lot happens in 800 years, you know, so it, the, the next generation of people of that, of those faiths might very well have corrected those errors, I don't know, I don't know anything about that history, you know, it'd be interesting to learn. So anyway, once there were men like Denyo, Gishin, Jikaku, and Chisho, who journeyed 10,000 miles across the waves to China to acquire, acquire the sacred teachings and there visited the mountains and rivers to pay reverence to Buddhist statues and carry them back. This is because when Buddhism left India, Hinduism kind of took over India again, and so Buddhism ended up only really happening in um, Tibet and China. So um, at those times, if people wanted in Japan, wanted to study the sources because there was no internet, they had to travel to China to visit the libraries there and um, copy things down and uh, beg, borrow, or steal. Uh, I guess probably a lot of them just figure out how they could just take stuff and carry Buddhist statues back to other countries like Japan and Korea and who knows where else. So in some cases, they built holy temples on the peaks of high mountains in which to preserve those scriptures and statues in other cases they constructed sacred halls in the bottoms of deep valleys where such objects could be worshipped and honored. As a result, the Buddhas, Shakyamuni, and medicine master shone side by side, casting their influence upon present and future ages. While the Bodhisattva's space treasury and earth repository brought benefit to the living and the dead, the rulers of the nation contributed districts or villages so that the lamps might continue... Um, to burn bright before the images while the stewards of the great estates gave their fields and gardens as an offering. So what he's saying is, you know, well, like it or not what they did, but they brought all these artifacts back to Japan and they set up all this kind of superstructure of libraries and knowledge and information. So, you know, hey, at least there was something, you know, there was something there. But because of this book by Honen, the Nembutsu chosen above all, the Lord of Teachings Shakyamuni is forgotten, and all honor is paid to Amida, the Buddha of the Western Land. The transmission of the law from Shakyamuni Buddha is ignored, and medicine master, the thus come one of the eastern region, is neglected. Attention is paid only to the three Pure Land Sutras in four volumes, and all the other wonderful scriptures that Shakyamuni expounded throughout the five periods of his preaching life are cast aside. If temples are not dedicated to Amida, then people no longer have any desire to support them or pay honor to the Buddhas enshrined there. If priests are not practitioners of the Nembutsu, then people quickly forget all about those giving those, giving those priests alms. As a result, the halls of the Buddha have fallen into ruin, scarcely a wisp of smoke rising above their moss-covered roof tiles, and the priest's quarters have become empty and dilapidated, the dew deep on the grasses in their courtyards. And in spite of such conditions, no one gives a thought to protecting the law or to restoring the temples. Hence the sage priests who once presided over the temples leave and do not return, and the benevolent deities who guarded the nation depart and no longer appear. This has all 
come about because of this this book so anyway um yeah so that's pretty clear right um you know this person came along stole a bunch of other faith practitioners um and then gave them an empty faith that was just what uh he expounded and um seemed to have you know dried up the resources of all the other buddhism which seemed to be his point by doing all, by doing that writing but Nichiren considered that lighting to be disinformation and why did he consider that to be disinformation well because it it didn't really help anything all it did was destroy some final temples you know and there those temples there wasn't inher anything inherently bad about them you know they weren't hurting people but at least they had information and knowledge and libraries and this guy was telling people to throw it all away and just keep these keep these uh, three books or this primary book of of his own church. And you know, again, if, if you're a Nembutsu person who's watching this, I'm all power to you. I hope you're I hope it's good, you know. Eight eight hundred years ago is a long time. A lot changes in eight hundred years. So anyway, um you know, how pitiful to think that in the space of a few decades, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people have been deluded by these devilish teachings and in so many cases confused as to the true teachings of Buddhism. If people fare, favor what is only incidental and forget what is primary, can the benevolent deities be anything but angry? If people cast aside what is perfect and take up what is biased? Can the world escape the plots of demons? Rather than offering up 10,000 prayers for remedy, it would be better simply to outlaw this one evil. So what he's saying is, is if somebody's lying, they should, they should outlaw the lie somehow. And, you know, by outlaw, I mean, you, you know, in those times, people spoke very, very harshly, so... Who knows what Nichiren really meant? Did he mean that they should make a law against that, against that faith? I don't know. I, I tend to think it's more like if you see it for what it is, for the falsity that it is and what the result, the bad result that it had on the society of the time, then it should be an outlaw of a, of a belief, you know. And these days, I would, equiv I would equivocate this with Russian disinformation, which is... You know, I've been on the internet for almost 40 of my 49 years. So I've really seen a lot of disinformation come and go. And this last round of crap from QAnon and all of that, to me, is like what this priest did. You know, he took people's faiths away from them. And then instead he gave them... a. Um, he, he gave them a, a pack of lies. So not only did they lose all those nice, wonderful things that they believed in before, but what did they get? They got a bag of shit instead. That's what they got. Bag of doo-doo. Because, you know, like, to put it in modern terms, once you start thinking that you're better than the, the gay guy or the drag queen next door, you're screwed already because you're not you know I hate to tell you but you're not better than us you know you you just believe in a lie and just because you may believe in a lie and get other people to believe in your lie that doesn't make you right it just means that all of you are deluded together you know and in Buddhism what causes suffering is delusion delusion is what causes suffering and then he's saying the benevolent deities go away. Yeah, that's what happens. You know, you start um, demonizing gay people in Florida. What happens? The gay people all want to leave. You think they want to stay around in that shit show? No, they sure don't. You think good teachers want to put up with Ron DeSantis' Nazi rules in the, in the schools? No, they don't want that either. Nobody wants that. None of those good people want it. So what happens? The good people leave. So what do you get? 
you get a crappy society left over. So anyway, that's all I have the energy for right now. Um, I kind of have some physical issues, so I've got to go take care of myself. And uh, you guys have a wonderful day. And uh, and I hope uh, Lonnie enjoyed this, even though there's lots of swearing. She'll have to bleep it out before she plays it for her kids. Take care. Aloha.